Frederick Hurst is an attorney, former commissioner of the Mass Commission Against Discrimination, and publisher of An Afro-American Point of View monthly news magazine. He recently wrote a passionate front page column entitled, Forget Trump, Worry About the Compromisers. I sat down with Rick Hurst to hear more. Well, I, I see a rough ride ahead, uh, for sure. Uh, like everybody else, I'm not certain which way he's going to spin it. Uh, but if he, it be, if he becomes the Trump that we think he's going to become, then um, we really have to give some thought as to how we're going to handle it. And I think that was the gist of my article. Uh, what worries me most, and that's the title that I wrote, what worries me most is that there are going to be a lot of people who are going to figure out, well, that's what I got, so let's cave into them. Instead of saying, hey, wait a minute, and to some degree we have to be prepared to resist some things. Uh, I worry about the compromises more than anybody else. The compromisers, as you say, and you say, we'll, we'll know them when we see them as they start to sell us various groups down the river. Yeah, and, and some of them won't sell you down the river, but there'll be compromises anyway, and you got to be careful about the ones who'll sell you down the river. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't say this negatively because I like Governor Charlie Baker, mm -hmm. but you can see him f caving in now, uh, even before election time. Uh, he was against Trump and had some very negative things to say about him. But now recognizing that he has to deal with the federal government mm -hmm. through Trump, he's going to the inauguration and um, he's going to do some smoozing down there. Uh, I don't think he'll sell us out. I, I don't. I think he's a good man. Uh, in fact, I voted for Charlie Baker, by the way. Uh, but um, but he, he has to make compromises, and I have no problem with that. That's our form of government. Uh, my problem is the, those people who compromise at the expense of some of us. Uh, and uh, history says that some of those compromises can be devastating. That's why That was the point of my article. You said, when Donald Trump can't deliver on promises that we all pretty much know he's not going to be able to build a wall. He's not going to be able to stop crime day one. Yeah. But a lot of things, while he may be able to make some improvements or changes, not going to happen the way he promised. You worry that as his supporters, his voters become disenchanted, he serves up scapegoats and the logical people, the black and brown people of America, and you said because they are red meat to much of his base. Unfortunately, that is true. Uh, I, I don't believe that all the people who voted for Trump were racist. I, I get that. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are some reasons that people voted for Trump that I understand. I wouldn't vote for him. Mm -hmm. But there's a whole category called racists who voted for him. Mm -hmm. Many of them are the old Southerners uh, who got disappointed when the... Uh, Voter Rights Act was passed. They began moving over to the Republican Party, and um, the, the, they're there now. And um, what Trump will do probably if he needs to, which is what has been done throughout history, is he'll look for scapegoats. And black folks, African Americans, have always been a prime scapegoat in America especially for poor white males mm -hmm. who think that um, uh, they've been cheated because of us. It's all a game, yeah. but Trump knows how to play those kind of games. Since the days of slavery, that game has been played. Uh, and I, I, I do worry very much that if, um, if Donald Trump finds himself in big trouble, and I think he will, uh, we have to make certain not to let that narrative play itself out. I don't think it's as easy to do that nowadays as it has been, uh, and, and we, it's up to us to make certain the narrative doesn't play itself out. That's why I mention it. Uh, I think Muslims fall in that category yes. now, too. Yes. You were very clear, and I'm, I'm going to quote you on this because it's, it's so direct and so important. You said to people, you needn't worry that America will ever go back to the world they want, they being the Trump base. Past is past. Black and brown folks will not be returning to the past. We're too smart and tough to let that happen. We'll fight. You say we've got to really, if I can interpret your words, and please tell me if I re misinterpret them, you say we're ready. We've got to be watchful. We've got to be ready to strike. Do you envision a struggle akin to what we saw in the, in, in the 50s, 60s, and 70s again? No, Doro. I don't think we'll ever go back there. I think we fought that battle. 
uh, but there'll be some backsliding. I do envision that. And um, we, um, I, I think that African Americans especially, we, we are not the people we were before the Civil Rights Movement. Uh, we are strong Americans, and we will fight back to keep our rights and to continue to, to gain the ones that we haven't yet gotten. Uh, I don't see any way that African Americans will allow themselves to be pushed around the way we have been pushed around in the past. Uh, I don't speculate on that. I know that. Mm -hmm. I would, I would say one thing to you, but I'm afraid your audience will take it wrong. We'll give you but time. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll say it. Since Trump was elected, gun purchases, legal gun purchases by African Americans has gone up by 40%. I don't think that's the kind of fight we're going to have. Mm -hmm. But I think that he was so frightening to some people that that was one of the things that, that it resulted from it. And with your background in the anti-discrimination legal field, when you see someone, a leader, saying things like, I will quarantine all Muslims, or I will, I, I can't trust this judge that's got my case because he's of Mexican descent, it, it gives license to other people who might see violence as the way, to, I, I think, to act, and you, you know this better than I do, I'm sure, and understand it. I certainly can understand someone who might feel threatened wanting to make sure they're in their house and protected. Absolutely. It does give license to, to people uh, to, to act out their, uh, their, their racism. Uh, and, and that's why it's so important that somebody in a position as important as the presidency or the presidency elect uh, to, to be very careful about how they approach these things. But I got to tell you, Donald Trump was about as reckless of, as I've ever seen a man who's waiting to become the president uh, be. And, and I think it's one of the saddest things that has occurred in this country in my lifetime. Uh, and, 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 I, and I hope that it's just something we're passing through. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got to ask you, you're, you're a media guy now, you're a publisher of a, a monthly news magazine that focuses on the community in a different way than the major publications, if you will to some extent, a little extra emphasis on communities of color, but much more than that in your reporting. What about the media in all this? It, it really feels like the media fell down on the job, somehow didn't tell the story. Trump was, was an entertainment, a sideshow, more than this is what somebody who wants to be president is doing and saying. I was so very deeply disappointed in the media. Uh, they let him huckster him, them. Uh, he just he just played them like puppets. He made them follow his agenda instead of following a journalistic agenda. And as a result, I mean, he was able to pull a wool over everybody's eyes. The things they're saying about him now, a lot of the things that are becoming clear now should have been the subject of the media back then. But instead, I mean, the media just kept running from one thing after another, a fire that he set. Mm -hmm and deliberately to distract attention. He got away with it. Uh, now the media, you can see the media struggling, trying to get back on, on, on point. Uh, it's, it's after the horse got out of the barn, as you know, and, and I don't know what it means for the future, uh, but I gotta tell you, you see, the, uh, you know, I've got a little street in me, and he could never do that to me. Uh, I would follow him around and trip him up every time. But I think these media folks tend to be uh, elitist, and they weren't prepared to deal with a guy like Trump who gets down in the gutter. You know, when you get a bully, uh, a schoolyard bully, I mean, I learned this a long time ago, I'm a small guy, so I got to know how to handle a bully. And, you know, you, when they come at you, you got to go right back at them. You got to make certain that they understand that you will confront them and, and it, you, you may get a little hurt, but they will too. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that the media uh, let Trump just run all over him. Uh, that was sad to watch. Well, we're cursed. I wouldn't pick in a fight, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Always a pleasure and an honor to have you in, sir. Thanks for coming. It's my pleasure, and I, I hope you invite me again. Mm -hmm.